have traveled a great distance to be here. And I've already instructed the district pastors not to talk to any of you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do talk to them, don't believe anything they tell you. And to my family, I appreciate your being here, especially as you will be traveling home during the Steelers game tonight. <laughs> but, and we're missing the great Red Sox-Yankees game, which is a good thing, because in my family, we come down on both sides of that rivalry. <laughs> but my dad, my brother David, and I are all drawn to the water, watching the waves roll in, listening to both its deep roar and gentle whisper. The beauty of the breaking waves, the variety of the colors, the power of its surge, motions and patterns, fascinates, renews, and restores us. We never understood why we had this fascination, knowing that if we, get, if we can get to the water every once in a while, it will balance and restore us. We never knew until recently, it was only recently that we discovered that Hamburg, Germany is actually a port city. That's where my grandfather is from. So we guess there must be seafarers somewhere in our lineage. Now mom's family came to Pennsylvania from Germany over 300 years ago. So any kind of ocean faring stuff from there is gone. <coughs> but I've also, I've, just, you know, I've always found relatives in all of my appointments. So if there are any Kreskis in the area, please let me know, because we're probably related. But visiting the ocean is a compulsion for me. And luckily, Ted enjoys it as well. I need to breathe in its majesty and its beauty. It's sometimes subtle, sometimes fierce in power. An ocean breeze wrapping around me is ruach, the breath of God embracing me. And I am compelled to experience the presence of God at the ocean. Now, quote according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, to compel is to drive or urge forcefully or irresistibly, to cause to do or occur by overwhelming pressure. To clarify, I am using compel as an irresistible urge. Just as visiting the ocean is a compulsion for me, let me introduce my first pastoral associate and talk about her compulsions. <laughs> this is Shotzi. For 10 years, she visited shut-ins, supervised youth groups, visited on college campuses and nursing homes, critiqued the choir, and did eight years of vacation Bible school, then she was allowed to retire from BBS after eight years. Shots had a compelling need in her life, the need to walk. She would walk in the woods, she would walk in the cemetery. She would walk a familiar route or a new one. She would walk in the park, she would walk after dark. She would walk in the rain, she would walk in pain. But walk we must, at least 40 minutes a day. And if we did not do that, she would wake me at four, 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay. My second pastoral associate was Blaze. He joined us later in life and was with Shotzi and I for about four years. Blaze was a happy-go-lucky walker. He was content to go wherever Shotzi led. My next pastoral associate was Teddy Bear. He has no compulsion to walk at all. <laughs> in fact, he'd rather not. It was fun to walk both shots and Ted, not this Ted, not that Ted. <laughs> For she would be out front leading the way, and he would be trailing behind, clearly saying, do I have to? Next to join the crew was Susie, who used to be a diva. But walking with shots, he taught her the joys of the outdoors and dead worms. And she now has a compelling need to run in any dirt she finds, rub in any dirt she finds. We are called to have a compulsion as well. Just as I need to visit the ocean, or the dogs need to walk, the love of Christ compels us to respond. When Jesus instructs Peter to feed his lambs, take care of his sheep, and feed his sheep, there is a sense of urging and compulsion, isn't there? It's not some off-the-cuff, oh, by the way, if you don't mind type of instruction. It is an, if you love me, 
do this. Do this as a sign of your love. I must confess that somehow in my mind, when I've read John 21, I've usually pictured Peter as the pastor and those sheep and lambs as the church. But in reflecting on the passage for today, for today, I've come to see that as too small of an impression, too small of an interpretation. Peter is a follower of God. And the lamb and sheep are those to be fed in the fold and those to be fed who have wandered away, those who are not here yet. All of us, as followers of God, are called to feed and tend the sheep. We are all called to care for those who are here and for those who are not here yet. John Wesley urges us to have a circumcision of the heart, to trim away the old nature and put on the new, as Colossians told us. But John says, one thing ye shall desire for its own sake, the fruition of him that is all in all. One happiness shall you propose to your souls, even in union with him that made them, the having fellowship with the Father and the Son, the being joined to the Lord in one spirit. One design you are pursued to the end of time, the enjoyment of God in time and in eternity. Desire other things so far as they tend to this. Love the creature as it leaves to the creator. We are to trim away that which comes between us and our compulsion for loving God. Every one of us in our very breath has a burning need to know God and encounter God and to find God. But sometimes other things get in the way and we need to take them off. In the movie Sister Act Two, that great religious classic, <laughs> there is a new scared choir that is singing in a competition. They've never sung before. They're just basically a choir, brand new, from the inner city. They don't know quite what's up and what's what. And they're formed together to sing. And as they get ready to sing, they realize that the previous champions are singing their same song. And they all go gulp. And they're afraid, and they want to go and they're frozen. But what they do is they cast off their robes and in using their own true voices, they respond to the love that has been shown to them by their director and they let their natural compulsion to love God back shine forth. They shine with the love of God. Was there that energy, that joy that vibrancy about loving God back, about being happy together, about being happy in God's presence. Was there? If Hollywood gets it, why don't we? We know God loves us, don't we? We know his presence, we know his power, we know his forgiveness, we know his grace. And we know there's a whole world out there There's a whole world that needs what we have. Do you get that? We have work to do, folks. We need to let people know that they are God's beloved sons and daughters, that they have purpose and a value, and a hope. And my compulsion is to get the churches at State College to worship like that. My compulsion is to get you to love your neighbors like that, to be bold, to risk, to do. Because if we do, we will transform the world for the glory of God. Join with me in sharing God's grace, his love, and his power with our neighbors that need it.
Amen.